Hey guys, this is Chandan and in this video we are going to discuss about Azure DevOps Helm Pipeline. So we'll create a Helm Pipeline within Azure DevOps using the ML file and we'll add Helm related tasks there. So our target is to mainly create a multi-stage pipeline that can use a single Azure Repos chart and that can deploy to multiple environments. So we'll target to deploy to dev and prod environment. So for that I have already created two clusters in Azure Kubernetes service. One is non-prod, another one is prod. And I have already pushed the Nginx chart, Helm chart to the Azure DevOps repos. And uh, you can see we have charts here. And uh, if you want to learn how can we create a chart or how can we pull a chart and push, so you can check out my previous videos. There I have shown how can we pull the chart from different repositories like we have used Nginx chart using artifact hub hub.io. We have pulled that chart locally and then we have modified few files and we have pushed that to Azure repos. And once we have chart here, then we will our target is to create a pipeline that can deploy this chart to different environments. So we'll deploy to dev and we'll deploy to prod. So let's start. So to create a pipeline, we just need to click on pipelines here and then we have option to create a new pipeline. So when we click there, then we have option like where is your code so it's asking question like where is your code and we have our code at azure repos git so if we click here so you can see there is a yaml label here so that's showing you it's a, it's a mainly yaml file and we can also use a classic editor that's a kind of ui view of azure devops but we want to create yaml file now so we'll click on yaml and then we need to select a repository so our code is at kubernetes repository and then we can configure our pipeline using these two options. So whether we have existing file, so we don't have file right now at Azure DevOps. So if you have any file, we can click here and then we can select, select that particular YAML file that will directly create the pipeline. And if you don't have any file, we can start with the starter pipeline. So let's click here and this will generate few lines of code. So we can see we have already triggers here. So that's the branch like you want trigger to be enabled from the main branch anybody is pushing the code to main so th this pipeline should auto trigger agents that uh, that's already configured so we have ubuntu latest agent right now uh, if you want to create host any private agent so we can also create that virtual machine and we can add it to our azure DevOps pipeline and then we have certain basic steps so in our case we will be mainly adding the helm related steps so basically in case of classic editor we have some predefined templates that we can use and that templates contain certain set of tasks that automatically it adds or if you are creating any empty job so we can add a new task by clicking on plus option in a similar way we have here assistant we can click on show assistant that will again open task and we can select any kind of task that we need for our pipeline and we can search it here let's say helm we can search it here and we can click it here and then we can fill few basic options and we can click on add. So if we click on add, then we will have all the related YAML scripts for that particular task and that will be added to that file. So later on we can create, you know, we can search those kind of tasks, we can add it here and later on we can store that particular YAML related scripts in this YAML file. We can store this YAML file as part of our source code. So the advantage is, let's say in case of UI classic editor, let's say somebody accidentally deleted the pipeline. So in that case, you don't have a backup source for that pipeline. But in this case, you have that particular backup for your pipeline. We can store this pipeline as part of the source code and also modify it or customize it based on our need. We can get multi-stage pipeline. We can add any kind of script if you want to add so we can simply write a script we can refer that script to any file so that's a kind of this is kind of you know efficient way of creating pipeline using yaml file and just to save the time i have already created a pipeline for the helm and then we'll understand what are the different steps that contains so this is the particular yaml script for the pipeline and we can see we have two different stage here one for dev one for prod so let's copy the entire script here And we can see now we have one stages collection of different stages stages and within that we have two stage dev and prod if you open any of the stage we have jobs within stage so a stage can have you know jobs we can define multiple jobs here and within the jobs we can define either job or deployment or template 
in this video we are not going to cover all but if you want to understand more about that you can refer to the azure devops documentation they have they have very good documentation for all those different templates you can look into jobs dot deployment or you can look into jobs dot template so we have all the information here or we can create jobs dot job if you want to create so jobs dot deployment is basically a special jobs that's mainly you know if you want to perform some action against the environment let's say we have dev environment or we have prod environment so we can create those environments in azure devops and later on we can use that environment in that particular deployment section so you can refer this particular documentation for all different type of templates so we'll for now we'll just use this deployment within the job and then within that we have option to configure the environment so what type of environment this particular stage is so we have kind of created a dev environment and we have created a separate prod environment if you open this particular stage so we can see we have added environment as prod now how can we create that environment that's the first question so we can create by this environment option we'll see it later here in this video but first we'll focus on this particular different type of keywords that we have used here and then we can add the variables for that particular stage so we have added a variable so we have defined that the environment is dev and then we can define a strategy for that particular deployment so this is a deployment type so we have different strategy that we can add so we have strategy like run once or rolling or canary so based on the requirement we can select you know different strategies so let's say run once is if you want to run in one go rolling is if you want to you know deploy to certain servers and then we want to target certain servers that's rolling strategy then canary is you know if you want small portion of the deployment first and then when we are satisfied with the deployment then we can completely deploy everything to the, all the servers so there are different strategy we are going to use run once for now and then we have you know deploy steps so uh, here also we have different different you know steps we can add pre-deploy we can add deploy so there are different different steps uh, that we can understand later like uh, deployment related pre-deployment related or routing related but for now i'm just going to add a deployment step i just want to target a deploy so that's where i have added deploy here and within the deploy we have certain steps so we can add certain steps here and within the steps we have defined you know checkout related step and then some task that's a bash script we are running helm within this bash script and then we have you know certain helm related task that's we have that we have added and that's mainly for login purpose so we can add you know separate task we have kubectl related steps also that we can do to login because we want to deploy this particular helm template to kubernetes service so we want to log into that kubernetes service so that's why we need login related task here and after that we have the actual helm upgrade that will perform for the actual deployment so we can see we have multiple steps here so first we are kind of fetching the source code from the repos we are kind of checking out the source code from the repos and once we have that source code then we are running dependency update so we want to make sure that whatever chart we have and whatever dependency is defined within the chart so those dependencies should be updated so we are first listing the dependency just for the view purpose and then we are actually running the dependency update with the chart name and then we are kind of uh, you know this is kind of login into the server and then once we have logged in then we have kind of simply running the helm upgrade so these are the basic tasks now you can find this checkout related task in the azure devops you can simply refer the same documentation we can simply write checkout and we can see steps dot checkout definition and here we have all the information about the checkout like what different different things we need to use for our checkout and we can add it as part of our pipeline so once we have added uh, the checkout steps and then we need to simply add the bash task here so we can select here bash we can select inline and when we click on add then it will simply add the bash related yaml scripts so within the script section we can write all the helm command and then we have helm deploy so we can search here helm we have package and deploy we have option to select a connection type we, we will use kubernetes service connection we have already configured in our project settings i have shown that in, our, in my previous video how can we add a service connection you can refer to that and then we can select the cluster that we want to deploy and then we need to define a namespace if we have something and then we can simply you know select a command so we just need to you know log into the cluster we'll click on login we'll simply click on add so that will again add the yaml script for that and then we can also search kubectl 
if you want to you know login using kubectl that also we can do same thing we need to select a cluster and then we need to select a command so we can select a login command that will also log into the cluster so that's also another way of login there are another way also if you want to run the simple az cli command so we can perform that also like az login and az aks get credential we can get that cube config information and once we have that information then we can simply perform the helm upgrade operation also one thing to notice is we have not used a helm install here uh, because we already have helm pre-installed in our agent but if you want to if you are getting any error like helm not found so we can simply refer to that helm install helm tool installer and we can you know specify a version that will install helm to the agent so these are the basic steps that we need to perform simply doing a checkout then we are kind of running dependency update for fetching the latest update from the chart then we are kind of doing a login to the cluster and then after that we are running the helm upgrade and the same operation we are performing for the prod just we have environment as prod and we are defining a variable as environment prod because we need this value in the values.yaml file so we have two different values.yaml file and within that we have different different configurations because we want we will have different configuration for dev different configuration for prod so that's why we have created values dev.yaml and values prod.yaml that is containing different configuration for the chart and while running helm upgrade we are kind of providing that particular option to select you know dev for the dev deployment and prod for the prod deployment so this is kind of you know basic script that we need to add for our pipeline so once we have that script ready then we can simply run it but before that we just need to understand how can we create this environment so first we need to create this environment so let's go to the pipeline environment section so we have we are within the environment and we have option to create environment so we'll just simply click on create environment and we just need to give a name to the environment so let's name it dev we need to give a description and we need to select the resources what type of resources this environment will have so this will have a kubernetes related resources because we want to deploy to aks so we'll click on kubernetes we'll click on next and then we can select different kubernetes providers so we are we want to deploy to aks so that's why we have selected aks here and then we need to select a subscription for that so we have a free trial subscription and we need to select a cluster so this is dev so we will just select non-prod for this and once we have selected a cluster we have option to select a namespace for now i'll just go with the default namespace so let's validate and create yep so we can see it has added a dev environment here and we have option we can see the deployments when we are running the pipelines we, we, we can see the resources so we have added a aks cluster related information here and then we can provide approval and check for dev I'll not give any approval but for prod we'll just configure one approval so let's create another environment prod again we need to follow the same process for prod it's asking to log in and now it has loaded the cluster this time we want to go with the prod because it's a prod environment and then we'll use the same default namespace let's validate and create for this also yeah so now we have created one more new environment that's prod so now we have two environments dev and prod one for dev cluster and another for prod cluster so now we can go to the pipeline we can see we have already added in our stage so we have added a stage called prod and within that we have added this environment as a prod so this is the place where we are linking that environment using this environment keyword and we just need to provide the name of an environment so also in case of development we have added we have already added environment as dev and let's modify this because space is not allowed before running this we need to make sure that pro should have pre-deployment approval so advantage of pre-deployment approval is like uh, before running this particular stage it will trigger a mail and approver needs to approve it so we just need to configure that we can set up an email id so it will send an email to that particular person then it will run only after the approval that's a kind of a very good option we can have that particular check before the prod deployment we want to make sure that they should not be triggered accidentally so let's click on the prod environment 
and we have option to configure the approval so we'll click on this approval and here we can just give the email id so i'll just give my email id for now and let's create it so it has just added this approval so if somebody is triggering this pipeline so this particular approver needs to approve this particular stage then only this will run so now we are ready with the basic pipeline script and also approval and let's give a different name to this release so let's name it test release i'll just simply change in prod also so now we have all the steps we have configured our environment so we are good to go let's click on save and run and we can see uh, this is a new pipeline so we need to give the permission so this we need to give for the first time let's give the permission to dev stage so i've just permitted so now it started running so it's performing basic checkout step and storing all the files to this helm folder and then performing helm dependency update so first just listing all the dependency and then fetching the updates of the charts and then performing a login operation and after that we are finally performing the upgrade so we can see upgrade is successful with this test release and the revision is one so we have successfully created a deployment for our kubernetes resource and it's successfully deployed to dev environment now we can go to the prod so it's still pending yeah same thing we need to first give a permission to this particular environment just needed for the first time and then it will ask for the pre-deployment approval so we have already added a pre-deployment approval in our prod stage so whenever it will run so it will uh, always ask you know that approval first and once that approved then only it will proceed with the further steps so let's refresh it so we can see one approval needs your review before this can run so we can review it this particular change and we can just provide a comment and then we can simply approve it so currently i am the approver so i have just approved it and now it will start the prod stage so this has started meanwhile we can go to the aks cluster and we can go inside the non-prod and we can check the deployment yeah we can see here we have this test release nginx in the default namespace and it has just created one pod so we can click here we can see all the details about this deployment also seems like our prod stage is successful so we can validate the prod cluster so let's click on aks prod let's go to workloads and we can see we just deployed successfully 18 seconds ago we can again check the pods and we can see we have new pods running just 40 seconds ago so we are good we have successfully deployed to dev and production environment so let's say we want to modify something we want to change something so we can simply go to the repos and here we can see we have this nginx folder where we have all the charts related files we can simply go to individual value files so we can go to values dev or values prod if you if you want to you know increase the replica if you want to define any particular configuration we can simply go and and change it here so currently our two pods are running in prod so we can click here we can verify it so we can simply search for replicas replica count and we can see current count is two and in development we can see we have a replica count as one so that's why we have one pod in development and two pods in production let's say if you want to increase the pod count in dev so simply we can go to edit and we can click here we can just we can just edit it here value we can do it from our visual studio code but for now just i'm just directly committing using azure devops just to show this so let's say i change the replica count of dev values file so it should again deploy a new pod and we can see it has completed the dev deployment and it's just waiting for the prod let's go to 
again cluster click on non prod click on this workload simply refresh it now we can see we have count as two so now two ports are running within this particular deployment that's how we can simply deploy by just modifying the value file and within the helm upgrade we'll have you know every time this will just increase the revision number of that particular release and for production we have added a uh, pre-deployment approval so that will not be triggered so if we if there is no change in production we don't want to deploy to production so simply we can just reject it so this deployment will not be done and simply it shows you know just it got deployed to the dev but it has not deployed to production because you know it's saying that approval was rejected so that's how simply we can you know trigger a deployment so this time let's let's just modify pro for production so let's say if there is a change in production we want to increase the production replica count and uh, we'll just modify from 2 to 3 so we can simply increase the count we can simply commit it we are simply merging to the main branch so this will trigger the pipeline because trigger is enabled and it will first you know deploy to dev but dev there is no any change so it will just create a new revision and for production it will create a new revision but it will have that replica change so it will just increase one more replica in the production environment dev is completed you can see it has just increased the revision here yeah seems like it's waiting for the approval so this will trigger an email also we can click on that email also and we can come here to approve it so this time i can simply click on approve so this will just start this prod deployment so we can see here it should be two yeah it's two and now we can go to the prod environment and now the count should be three prod and we can see we have here three pods running within the pods we can see we have two pods earlier and this just started 50 seconds ago so that's how you know we can manage the helm chart within the azure repos and we can create a simple yaml pipeline that will just fetch that chart and it will it can just create the release and later on we can manage that particular environment by creating a different values file and also we need to create different environments for that particular different stages so that when we are running that pipeline so different stage will be connected to different environments in the kubernetes so in this video we have just learned about a basic deployment of helm charts and genix chart in the upcoming video will try to explore more features of azure devops we'll try to create different azure devops pipelines for different different type of technologies and also we'll try to cover more features of kubernetes we'll try to create more kubernetes components so nowadays there are many kubernetes components that's very popular so that's you know monitoring related observability related or security related or you know testing related so we'll try to explore all those different kubernetes component in the upcoming videos and we'll try to create certain pipelines to deploy all those different kubernetes components so that's it for now thanks for watching